Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We are working this week on unlocking the full power of the kingdom. Yesterday, we looked at the words of Jesus, who reminded us that we cannot allow the world to influence our response and how we carry ourselves in this world. We recognize that the world is broken, that the world needs saving. That is why we are here. Too often, we allow the world to dictate the terms, to tell us who we are, to, to tell us how to respond. We've played that for too long. And now we have ears to hear the better way. To respond as God would call us to respond, not as the world would suggest we respond. So we started with Jesus on yesterday, and today I want to look at 1 Peter. Now, Peter is one of the original disciples of Jesus, and so many of the words we shared yesterday were first heard by Peter and the rest of the disciples and those that were traveling with the disciples. What does it look like years later, now that Peter has entered the, the mission field and is taken up the, the cross and is, is called to leading the church? What are the things that he's experienced? How has he applied the lessons that Jesus taught him? Well, he's been in the world for quite some time at this point. And he wants to communicate that those to those that are coming after him that it's hard. It's as hard as everything Jesus said it was going to be. And oftentimes it feels that that the weight is just pressing down on us. But he also desires to share with us that everything that Jesus spoke is true. And there is a power beyond our understanding available to us if we will simply follow Jesus. So we're going to begin here in 1 Peter, first chapter, verse 3. All praises to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your, your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Peter reminds us of the gift that God has blessed us with, the gift of salvation. We have already tasted, we've already witnessed the power of God. We've experienced it personally. Too often the world wants to steal that from us. So it's important that we are in God's word and reminded regularly, daily, of the beautiful gift of salvation and the wonders of God's grace. And that all of what God has promised is waiting for us. And now we are simply called to live out our lives in a way that honors him. Continuing in six, so be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold 
though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus is revealed to the whole world. There's a process. The first time we hear God's word, the first time we answer and, and ask for forgiveness and seek salvation, is amazing. But we have many more days ahead. How will we survive this broken world that has such an influence? When everyone around us seems to be not following God's ways. Well, if we see those as just what's going to break us down and destroy our faith, it's hard to get up in the morning. But if we see those as the trials that Peter is referencing as opportunities to demonstrate our faith, even in the times of struggle, in the times of crisis, and we learn how to respond each time we face those trials in a way that honors God, we are being fashioned into the instruments that God needs us to be to see more come into right relationship with him. We can't afford to be on the sidelines. We can't afford to receive the gift of salvation, and then close the book. We must be willing to continue to strive towards God, no matter what the circumstance. It doesn't seem fair. Others are, are manipulating the situation to always try to figure out how they come out ahead Others seem to be flourishing while we're struggling. The beauty of what God is asking of us is that when we respond as he has called us to respond, he shows up. He lifts our burdens. And he invites us in to his presence. He mends our wounds and helps us move forward. Too many of us have felt all of the chaos and all of the pressing weight and never turned the key, never tried to live a life that truly honors God, never really tried to respond in the way that God is asking us to respond. And that's why our faith remains weak and crushable. And why we go in and out of relationship with God as we go in and out of relationship with the things of the world. God wants more for you. Today is the day that we begin moving truly, and one accord towards him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We don't look for trials, Lord. The world is hard enough to navigate without them. But we, we desire to understand them, Lord. Help us to hear from you today in the middle of our trials, in the middle of the crisis, in the middle of the storms. Help us turn to you and say, how would you have us respond, Lord? And help us be faithful in that response. We no longer desire to live by our selfish nature. We desire 
to live as citizens of the kingdom. Help us make good choices today, Lord, and to follow your will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Going to have some more of Peter throughout the week. We'll leave it there for today. Please know that I love you and I miss you. Looking forward to all being together and moving forward as a church. Till then, please be good. <laughs>